This video is a short tutorial of the two key parts of InfoTip that will be used during a lesson. We call them Teach and Learn. Teach is on the left of your screen. This is a website that runs in most modern web browsers and typically in a lesson I'd have this projected on my interactive whiteboard. On the right is the pupil view which we call Learn. In this case it's running on a smartphone but it could equally be on an iPod, a tablet such as an iPad or through a computer's web browser. What you can see is a demo lesson on the topic of circle theorems. Uh, we've used this with high tier GCSE mathematics group. Your demo account should have access to this lesson. In the screen you can see the questions that make up a lesson. To make them easy to manage they're grouped into folders. Uh, for example, I've got a folder here that consists of the, the questions I want pupils to do as part of my lesson starter. Uh, I can hide these later uh, just by clicking on the folder. The demo lesson is already in progress. Um, we have pupil responses to the, to the starter question. Uh, the first tab here shows that we've got four students as part of this lesson uh, and if I click on this tab I can see how the students are getting on. We can see they've each answered five questions. These red and green bars are common throughout in Voto. The green represents correct answers, the red incorrect answers. At the end of each of these bars is a little bit of grey. This is because this lesson consists of uh, one question that does not have a correct answer. Uh, it was a question about gathering people's opinions. If we look at Charlie here, you'll see here that he's only got one question correct. On the right, we can narrow it down that he got the first question right, uh, that second question was the opinion question, and then he's got the last three questions wrong. Uh, if we click on these little red bars, we can get a quick preview of the question he's got wrong, so we can see uh, what it is that he needs help with. So coming back to the questions tab, uh, we can see that on question B1, all four of our pupils got this question correct. The second question, this one with the grey bar, is the one that has no correct answer. Uh, if you hover over the title, you see the, the preview of the question that says, in your own words, how would you describe the properties of an isosceles triangle? Well, to see how pupils responded, we need to click on the question. This will bring up much more detail about how pupils have responded. We can see this in different ways. Uh, if me as a teacher, if I wanted to quickly see how each pupil responded, I click on response table. But if I wanted to preserve pupils' anonymity and if I wanted to project these nice and big for part of the class discussion, clicking on carousel responses will show them one by one, nice and big, so we can talk about them. So the first pupil said it has two identical angles. Second pupil has said that it's got a vertical line of symmetry. Third pupil said that it has two angles the same. And the final pupil says it has two equal sides and two equals angles. Uh, there's other buttons here that you can investigate for yourself. Coming back to the question tab, if we look at this fourth question, this is the one that stands out to me as one where only one pupil has got this question correct. Again, if you hover over, you'll see a preview of the question, which might help us narrow it down. But to get more detail, we need to click and we can get a bigger view of the question that helps us as we project. So initially, there's no hint as to how pupils have responded. This means that you can project and talk about this question with the class with our pupils' responses uh, prejudicing the way uh, our conversation goes. But to see a bit more detail, we could look at a response table like before, but to see this more visually, if you click on bar chart, we'll see that two pupils responded that it was 99 degrees, one pupil responded that this is an impossible triangle, and only one pupil here has actually the green bar indicating that that's the right answer, said that it was 81 degrees. If you don't want to give pupils a hint as to which one's right or wrong, we can get rid of this correct uh, button here that hides the green colour. OK, let's go back and think about how pupils would join this lesson. On the Join tab, it gives hints that there's two main ways. Uh, on the right-hand side, you can see this QR code. Pupils have got tablets or smartphones that can scan QR codes. They can scan this code and get straight into the lesson. The alternative method is that we invite particular pupils to join this lesson. So we can either do that by assigning it to particular pupils. So if I want to assign this lesson to Alice, I start typing in her name and assign it to Alice Arnold. Alternatively, we can assign it to whole groups of pupils. So if I click on this thing, you'll see that I have two classes. This, this group here is my year 11 group. So anyone from that year 11 group would see this lesson as part of their lesson list. Um, initially, you won't have any groups as part of your account, but you will have this one called guest accounts. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to sign this lesson to guest accounts, I'm going to press save, and then we'll see what you see on the pupil side. Okay. So having gone uh, 
Right, having gone to the home page, um, I am going to click on the sign in here button and I'm prompted with a username and a password. Uh, so I'm going to sign in as one of the 99 guest accounts. These are numbered from guest 1 up to guest 99 and have a blank password. So I'm going to log in as guest 42. So I'm just signing in and I can see Mr. Demo's lesson in my list so I'm going to join it. So in a second you'll see these people join the lesson. You'll also recall that they're going to get the first question which is the one that so far all of our pupils have got correct. So in just a second, they'll get the first question on the screen, and I should see as well that they've joined my lesson, and so far uh, they won't have answered any questions. Okay. I'm going to have a go at this question, but sadly I'm going to get it wrong. I'm going to say that this is a scalene triangle. I'm going to submit my answer. So you see at this point... All four pupils have got this question correct. And I can see at the top of my screen that I got that last question wrong. A red bar has appeared. And now I can see as well that we've got one pupil who thinks that this is a scaling triangle. To see who that pupil is, I've come to the response table and see that it's guest 42 who's now said the correct answer they think is B, scaling triangle. Okay. The next question that's appeared on my screen is a free response question. Um, it's asking me, in my own words, how I would describe the properties of an isosceles triangle. Um, so I'm just going to type something in here. And I'm just going to submit that. Now, because this question isn't actually marked by the computer, it doesn't. It uh, co comes up as a grey bar. Okay. The next question is also a free response question, but this question can actually be marked by the computer as correct or incorrect. So this time, I'm going to get this one right. I'm going to say that angle BCA is. 46 degrees. The degree symbol is there already for me, so I just need to click on submit. In a second as well, I should see that we've rather than having four pupils answer this question, we've now got five, and because they answered it correctly, this two should turn into a three. Okay, and I can see that I've got that last question correct because I now have a green bar at the top. Okay. Uh, this next question I'm going to get correct as well by clicking on 81 degrees. And clicking submit. And I can see that I've got that last question right. Um, this last question here tells me that I can select more than one answer. Um, so which of the following triangles are isosceles? Select all that apply. And if I go down, um, I'm going to click on the answers. So while our student chooses the right answers, we'll just uh, remind ourselves here. So this is guest 42 who's doing this. She got the first one wrong, which was the question here um, about what kind of triangle is this? And what you'll actually see in a second, because she's on the final question of the starter, if you look on the screen, she has now been asked to start doing uh, incorrect questions to have another go. Mm -hmm. So I can see that I got that last question correct. Um, but up here, it's telling me that this is my second attempt at a question that I previously got incorrect. Um, so I'm now going to get this correct. And what you'll see is that, so this is question B1 that she's attempting for a second time. Uh, at the present time, we've got four pupils answer it correctly and four pupils of green. 
one pupil was red, but that red is just turned into a yellow. We use this color yellow in, in, in Invoto to signify that it's a question that is now correct, but it wasn't correct necessarily first time around. Uh, as well, if we come to the students tab, you'll see that guess 42 has still only got three questions correct first time, but there's the signifier here that they've subsequently got a question correct on a, on a second attempt. And in the progress bar as well, we can see the final question that she's got right for a subsequent time. Uh, now, if you have a look at the screen, uh, the pupil screen. OK, so this is what I'm looking at because I've finished the questions in that lesson. Uh, so this is what I see as the pupil. Yeah, and if you have a look here, I mean, the starter consisted of just these five questions and this pupil has answered all five of them. Next to each question, we have these play and these pause buttons. If I click on pause next to a particular question, it will stop it being assigned to any, any more pupils. Uh, likewise, if I press pause next to a folder of questions, it will stop any of those questions in that folder from being answered by pupils. So at this point, the starter's over, I close those questions to any further pupils and all pupils would see the waiting screen. Uh, once we're at the point where I want to assign more questions to them, so if I want to as assign these angles in the same segment questions to the pupils, uh, I press the play button and the pupils, after a couple of seconds, would start being assigned questions from this group of questions. Um, so the pupil here should start getting the first question from this batch uh, and as they respond, I start seeing responses here. I think at this point we'd like to encourage you to sign into your demo lesson to have a look around. You'll see the same questions and the same four pupils who've given you a set of initial answers. Just to be sure that when you log in as a guest, when you're pretending to be a pupil, that it's your lesson with your name next to it that you join, as opposed to someone else's, otherwise you're answering the questions in their lesson and you won't see the responses. Uh, lastly, if you have any comments, uh, you could either reply to uh, add a comment to the, to the blog posting, or on each of our screens from the, uh, on the teacher side, we have a feedback tab. If you type in your feedback here, press send, it will get emailed to the Invoto team.